Greetings, friends. It's Alexa again. And we're another with another de death stream this time as well. It's a little bit of a slower one because you can tell right now the sort of hype for Last Epoch is pretty low right now. I'm usually the only one streaming it, <laughs> at least on, in English, um, on Twitch as well. And there is not much views going on other than build guides. People are not really looking for something else. And these videos, I guess. And you can also tell because this video or this stream of his was pretty slow on questions. And he was mostly talking about other things and other games he plays and just some things that have been repeated a lot already. Uh, there were a bunch of few things still, and of course, this doesn't mean the game is dead. Even though people keep saying this, it's not dead, it's just normal. This is the first cycle, and everyone has done all the content, they're doing other things. They will be coming back when new stuff is happening, and there will be a lot of new stuff with this game. Anyway, we're not going to go on tangent on this again. Um, there were a bunch of... This is going to be a shorter video, but there were a bunch of points in this I wanted to cover still. Um, one of which is the first one where he talks about efficiency a little bit in leveling indirectly because he was asked about the pinnacle bosses how they are sort of woven into the game and then he went on a slight tangent on what they do and with dungeons as well so let's hear about this and then we I give my thoughts on it all right it, like what one thing um that i think we we struggle with a little bit in um So, so some of the some of the side activities so like you've got your main activity that you're looking to do in the model you're, you're, you're pushing corruption um, you're killing bosses you're completing prophecies like these are all things that are happening inside the monolith and that, that are like slowly working towards uh, a singular goal um and then sometimes you get into dungeon situations where you're like i need to complete the dungeon for the reward but it doesn't for really like it doesn't give me progress towards anything else or I have to go back and I have to complete my passive rewards, uh, my passive uh, and, and idle unlocks on, on side quests and things like that. And there's, there's like there's there's things that can take you out of uh, the like efficiency route, like where, you, where you're like ah, I'm no longer being efficient anymore. I'm no longer being, playing optimally because I'm not doing the thing that's going to provide the best bonus. But it's something that like needs to be done anyways. So I'm going to stop here. He's going to talk a little bit about the same thing. Basically, the idea is, and I've said this before as well, um, that, for example, leveling or even just going through the campaign the first time, but also leveling out is sometimes a little bit inefficient in how the, the whole thing is set up. Um, you have to play through most of the campaign. Even if you go through the dungeons, you still have to do the campaign parts mostly because you need your idle slots, right? I mean, I made a whole video on how what the most efficient way is to get through the campaign or like to level your alts fastest and it still uses most of the campaign chapters and dungeons so sometimes it feels like it's even more work <laughs> you have to do than just playing through the campaign so i wonder what they'll be doing to this it sounds like they are working on this to an extent um and i personally think it's a little bit it could be much more efficient especially because last epoch is fully focused around making new characters as a sort of gameplay mechanic um, instead of leveling one character to 200 all, all the time, you can. it's super easy to make a new one and go with him into the thing. You get to the end of time very fast, right? Which is intentional. You get to the monoliths early. So it's not really intended to play one character for the rest of your life. It's really intended to try all the things, right? So I think there is something they should look into and they're probably doing as he's talking or as he's saying this. Um, on how to make this more efficient that you don't waste so much time um, on leveling your alt character. Also, for example, I still think that the Lightless Arbor Dungeon is mostly useless. Like once you actually have your items, you, you gain from it, right? For example, the, the mountain items, like the boots and the, if you get the core of the mountain and the peak of the mountain, you're pretty much never gonna play this dungeon ever again because there's just no point, right? There's really, what do you get from it? You, you have the items, so what's what's the point, really? Um, the Soul Fire Dungeon, pretty much the same. You can gamble with the Soul Gamble, but that's about it. The only real dungeon you want to replay every now and then is the Pono Sanctum Dungeon, so you can craft your legendaries. But the other two dungeons are not really that useful outside, like, once you have all the items. Of course, if you go with new cycles, you will eventually come there to get these items. But if you're looking at legacy and what you've built up over time, not really a point. So I like that they're addressing this. We don't know exactly what they're doing, but it sounds like they are focusing on actually making the leveling process. And he said this also in other streams, the leveling process 
much more efficient. One thing they would definitely bring is a sort of accelerated way to go through non-empowered monoliths. The first time you level your alternative character, um, because that is very tedious. For example, if you play a super strong build, right? You want to just get to empowered monoliths super fast. Now you have to go through all this really boring content. You have to play through all monoliths and they're no, not even a struggle whatsoever. You can just breeze through them. But that's just wasted time really to get there. So, and he mentioned this himself in another stream. So they're looking how to make this more efficient, also the leveling, which means my video will then be void, but whatever. <laughs> uh, in a past stream, I heard you say Rune Master needs some attention. Please tell me you're not going to nerf my boy. Yeah, we're going to nerf it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, like we're but how you like what ward, you not what? ward overall at the top end goes too hard um that's something we've not been shy about saying at all uh and and had the like um that that, that survey that balancing survey that we did like three months ago now if that had come back with just like yeah do mid-cycle balances it, ward would have been nerfed already um But you know, the, the, the playstyles that are popular with, and fun with Rune Master right now, that people enjoy the playstyles of because the playstyles are fun. You know, th things like that, like we still want to promote those as powerful and fun playstyles. So that they're they're still going to be really strong and all that sort of stuff. So there you have it, Rune Master is going to be nerfed. I mean, we knew this. Vault in general is going to be nerfed, so that definitely hits the Warlock and the Rune Master pretty heavily for sure. Um, well, generally, both classes, the Acolyte and the Mage, because they do revolve around Walt a lot, because that's their defense mechanism. He said they will still keep the build strong, but not overpowered as they are right now. I hope they can find that balance. It will be painful to see them die out, because it's like over-nerfed. Um, so someone will most likely fall, like get the short end of the stick, who knows. But um, yeah, Walt is definitely coming down, which is good, because then we will also see other... Uh, defense mechanisms be stronger and i really <laughs> like this and this is why i put in this video because i recently started playing the rune master for the first time i did play a lot of sorcerer and can really tell that the rune master is just so much stronger than the sorcerer it's not even like it's not even the same planet how much they are differ differing the sorcerer is so bad compared to the rune master it's kind of crazy um and there's also if you think about it, no real point to have go to sorcerer because the Rune Master does everything better. <laughs> so what I hope is, they're not introducing any new skills, right? With 1.1, they said this. But what I hope is going to happen, that the Sorcerer sort of gets a different direction than the Rune Master. Because the Rune Master currently is just a better Sorcerer. Um, and I hope they find a way to use the existing skills to make the Sorcerer sort of deviate stronger from the Rune Master in a different direction. And in what it does, maybe more focus... I mean, it's tough because the Rune Master, basically, with the runes, you are casting things all the time, like creating things with magic. That's what you do. The Sorcerer is pretty much doing the same thing. So maybe there's a class issue. They might have to rework this bigger. It might not come with 1.1. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's still interesting, though, because, of course, all the overpowered builds will be nerfed. As I said before, free and corruption is what the ga ba game is balanced around. So anything that goes higher, like in four digits, is not working as intended. You can surely go to 500, 600 with builds in the future, but anything higher is just not intended. So the Rune Master, being very strong right now, is going to get nerfed, but I hope they find the balance that it still is fun and strong enough. Because let's be honest, there is also fun in just having a very strong build, right? If you can just easily kill bosses, there is some fun in that, but it also gets boring fast. So this is a tough balance. If you have to struggle with things, this can also be fun. Not struggle, if you have challenge with things, this can also be fun. But if it's just constant struggle and you die all the time, like I did with the Sorcerer, then it's not fun anymore. So this is a very delicate balance, and I wonder if they can pull it off. So there's your first leak for this week. That's a nice rhyme, this was not intended. Uh, this is for the Forge Guard, right? As you can tell, you need 45 points in Forge Guard passives, so that's on the high end. You have a chance to cast a shield from Ring of Shields when you block a hit, and you have additional block effectiveness per shield from Ring of Shields. You can trigger up to three times every six seconds. Additionally, your minions have increased health and armor. So there's a lot in this thing. You can put five points into it. 
Now, personally, I have no clue about the Forge God. I have never played it, and I don't even intend to, unless it's like really cool going forward. It's not my kind of style. I'm I play the casters, I play acolyte, shaman, and mage. That's sort of my thing. I don't like the warrior too much. Um, so you, for the Forge God, you would have to go to other streamers most likely. But uh, it's still interesting to see what they do with this. It seems like a very strong node, honestly. So I feel like, even though he says a lot, or talks a lot about how they will sort of bring things down, also bring things up, the nodes we've seen so far have all been pretty strong. So it seems like most things are coming up a lot in power, which would sort of contradict exactly what he said about um, corruption push. <laughs> Then again, it was only notes for um, really severely underpowered builds. So uh, maybe this is necessary to get them back up into some, some great areas. And we're going to see this with the next um, leak, which is about the Spellblade, which is also very strong. There is Defender of Varen. This is for the Spellblade, right? Dexterity plus one per point. So you can put eight dex, dex into your Spellblade. Five point bonus. You have increased critical strike chance per point of Dexterity. That is 8% per point. So let's say you have 10 decks on your Spellblade, that's 80% increased crit chance. So if you stack Dexterity a lot, then you can just get this up to like 300%. But the other point is this, Dexterity is... I mean, it does fit with the Spellblade, obviously, because right, you need some Dexterity to, to wield your weapons. That makes sense. Um, but it's not really something you scale with very well, right? You mostly scale with Intelligence, obviously. Um, so it doesn't really buff your skills that much, except for, like, I think, two of the skills of the Spellblade. Um, but it does give you a great crit chance. So it's sort of, he mentioned it himself, this was sort of the idea was that you actually use the dexterity you gain through other things, maybe even weapons, items, or um, skills, or passives. Now you can actually make use of that extra dexterity points you have, which not really scale your damage that strongly, but you have them in your character sheet, so now you can actually make use of it with this node because it increases your crit chance. I like this idea because sometimes you're sitting around, like when I play some sort of Acolyte and I have an item that gives me a ton of strength. I had this recently. I don't know what it was. I think it was actually the Rune Master. Or was it the Mage? I like the Sorcerer. I don't remember. But it was sitting on like 24 strength. And I was like, okay, this gives me armor and that's about it. I just gained this from items, which I needed for something else. But if I could make some use of this extra strength in this class, that would be cool, right? So this is sort of the idea with this, I believe. Um, if you have items that give you dexterity on your spellblade, now you can make more use of that extra dexterity you have in your character sheet, and it's not just sitting there doing nothing. Uh, will monster dot be toned down uh, a bit? Feels like my HP uh, base characters get insta deleted by dot. I don't have any details on specific balance changes available right now. If you do have a suggestion you'd like to see, please head on over to the forums. Um, there are like different, we're trying to expand the tools people have available for defensive layers in general. Um, so it's possible one of those might help with that better. I don't, I don't think this is a specific concerted effort to improve that necessarily. We do put dangerous dots on the ground intentionally um, as like a, hey, you, you better move unless you're like really specced to handle this, like, like get your button gear and get moving. There's boss fights that you just like sit there and it's like, well, I just stand here and kill it. It's, it's boring, right? Like it might as well be a training dummy. I mean, he does bring up a good point there um, that the dot pools in the created by the characters or by the enemies rather um, force you to move. But I think this also, why, why I understand it, you wouldn't just stand around and, and cast shit. That's of course very annoying, but I don't think people do this themselves anyway because you're so always just kind of moving aren't you unless i'm just used to it in last epoch but my point is this really which is why i bring this up the problem i see here is um because we do have channel abilities right and they want to also bring in more channel abilities and my problem always has been that channel abilities always feel inferior to any other ability because you are locked in your position so you cannot go away from these dot pools, for example, or telegraphed attacks from the enemy without breaking your channel. Now, of course, this is usually rectified with the channel being very strong, right? The channel abilities are usually a bit overpowered. Not all of them right now, <laughs> but some are. Like the, the Warlock, for example, has a good one, the Ghost Flame. But 
on like for example, if you think of the glyph of the minion, right, for the mage or the sorcerer, uh, the rune mass in this case, you are supposed to stand in that to gain your buffs, right? And I think you could also build a lot of things around that sort of areas you have to stand in, or maybe you can create an arena for your sort of paladin where you have to stand in and fight enemies within it where you get a buff. Um, but you can't really do this if these dot pools exist, they really kill you. And the people, uh, the person who asked this had a very good point because he mentioned the HP builds. And I think he was mostly focused on the defenses because just stacking HP isn't really a good, strong build right now in this game. Um, it's much better to have block or um, endurance or glancing blows or whatever because just HP you just die to most bosses anyway and especially on higher um, corruption you can't really stack that high you, you would need like 10k health to even tank an attack or something so just stacking HP is not really a good defensive mechanism in this game at this point point. and I think the, the question was more around that if this will be ever rectified, that actually stacking HP will be better because if you stand in these pools, for example, or um, standing in a boss attack, then you usually die unless you have some sort of endurance or even resistances, right? Um, now, the, the go-to method always is really to stack or like to cap all your resistances at 75%. You do this with all your characters, unless they are all part. Um, do they want this? I don't know. It feels like there should be more. And he said they will do this right in the, in the earlier thing, that they will be looking more into defenses to make them more viable. Other ones as well, not just ward, bringing ward down and everything else will also gain more life from that. I hope so. Because right now it's really just stacking resistances, stacking endurance and uh, ward. That's your three best defenses, except you ha if you have a class-specific one like the rogue, right, with your glancing blows or dusk trot or whatever. Um, but it's general, the, the general, general available defenses, it's mostly just go with ward always. That is too strong. That will be nerfed. We know that. But def like resistances capping is still the strongest thing of all of them, um, especially late game. So yeah, HP builds still bad. I don't think it doesn't really sound like they will change it from what he said because he sort of avoided the question itself and focused on the dot pools themselves. I don't know. Maybe it's also because Dot just isn't ever, um, what's it called, lessened by your armor, right? Because damage over time cannot be reduced. Um, maybe that's also an issue. Maybe you find, or maybe they add more, more spells or rather more nodes for that. I don't know. But definitely, I wonder what they will be doing with defenses. There is definitely some work necessary for those. They are very unbalanced right now in which one is strong, which sucks. Because nobody, for example, plays parry ever. I have not seen a single build using parry, right? Um, maybe it's because it's an, a prefix and not a suffix, as it should be. I don't know. We'll see. Um, they will definitely change something. I found it interesting, though, that someone mentioned the HP builds because I do think they are very bad right now. Um, they do nothing, just stacking HP. Other than, for example, in Vault, right? If you play a Vault build like with Exanctionist, for example, then you want to stack HP because that gives you more Vault, but that's really just circumventing the problem. <laughs> so that doesn't, that doesn't count. Anyway, I hope this was interesting for you today. Let me know in the comments what you think of what I just said and what he said and what you're thinking of things that are happening right now and that should be coming. And I will see you next week with the next Death Stream. And until then, have a good time with a very, very quiet... Twitch and YouTube about less epoch, but we will be back strong. I guarantee it.